Hello guys, these days most companies want to hire full stack engineers, full stack developers with backend and frontend. So here's an example from Lara Jobs. In addition to Laravel, companies require Vue.js for example here or in this case. But have you noticed that there are very different ways how companies and different projects use Vue.js in Laravel? Even those two specific jobs are very different. First job is Vue.js inertia. Let's zoom in. So Vue.js inertia. And then the second one looks like this. Complex front-end application using Vue. So knowledge of Vue components, Vue X and Vue CLI. So front-end first. So in this video, I will show you actually not two, but three different approaches of how you can use Vue.js or React.js. It's similar in Laravel. And also I will talk about their popularity. So which kind of Vue.js integration in Laravel you probably should learn and dive deeper into. And also I received a similar comment recently on YouTube how to build Laravel plus React project, basically whether we need separate front-end and back-end folders or components inside of resources.js, which probably means inertia. So let me show you four different project examples with their code. Three of them will be view and one extra alternative at the end. So this is Laravel starter kit, which uses Vue.js and inertia. And I've created tasks menu item to manage task and you can untick the checkbox and then the task becomes complete or not complete. And this is the code. In the routes we have task controller, which returns inertia render and then tasks index Vue.js component looks like this. So script and template with the list and checkbox that triggers toggle task, which is in the same file in this case. So in this case, we have so-called built stack, view, inertia, Laravel, and Tailwind, where Vue.js components are tied together with the same layout. And you don't need to have view router because router comes from inertia and you don't need to have separate Laravel API because the data comes from controller like this. So this is probably the most common way to use Vue.js and probably React.js in Laravel these days. I see more and more project use it specifically like this, including official core starter kits, Vue and React both use Inertia. Also, from my understanding, Laravel Cloud and Nightwatch, they are written in React, but also with Inertia. So this now becomes kind of a standard of how to use Vue.js in Laravel with Inertia. And now let's take a look at the opposite alternative, front end first application. This case is not a starter kit. It's a front-end Vue.js application with Laravel on the back-end as a separate API. So they are totally different repositories, URLs, and everything. So in the Vue.js, we have index.view. So that view isn't part of Laravel project. You can see the structure of the folders. It's not Laravel. It's just Vue.js, which then calls Laravel API like this. So Axios post to complete a specific task. And also we have separate use tasks JS, which also call Axios get to get the tasks. And then there's a separate Laravel project in a separate repository, or it could be in the same repository in a subfolder. It depends, but basically separate project with just Laravel that doesn't know anything about Vue. They are totally separate worlds, which has routes API. Here we have task controller and return JSON to that API. So in here, if we refresh the front end, one of the things will be request to the tasks API. Let me zoom that in if it's possible. Yep, it is possible. So we have that API call to slash API slash tasks with different URL. And the response is JSON, which is then parsed in the front end in Vue.js. So before inertia, this was kind of the global standard of how to use Vue.js or React.js in Laravel. Separate front end, separate back end, and API. But this approach requires more work, separate authentication logic, router, dealing with separate domains or subdomains. So it still works, but it's more complex. That's why inertia kind of saves developers from that work for those developers who work as full stack developers controlling both front end and back end. So this approach for separate front end and back end, in my opinion, still works for the cases where you have totally separate teams. So separate only front enders, separate only back enders, or for example, you're outsourcing one of those to separate company or separate developer, 
Or, for example, if you create an API and plan to use it in Vue.js client, mobile application, somewhere else, then of course it makes sense to have that API. Otherwise, from what I see in Laravel community, inertia is now much more preferred. But this approach still works. No one has cancelled it or whatever. It has just lost its popularity. And finally, there's a third way to use Vue.js in Laravel, the original way like years ago when Vue.js appeared on the scene. I remember learning it this way. So the full project is Laravel, and then you use Vue.js for specific component behavior when you want to change something dynamically. For example, show more, and it shows more text show less and it hides it. So just small bits of JavaScript where you need it. So basically replacing jQuery or plain JavaScript with a bit more structure. So this is how I learned Vue.js back in the day, like 10 years ago or something. I don't even remember what year it was. So this also still works. Let's take a look at the code. So the whole project is Laravel based on our own, by the way, starter kit. We have Laravel daily starter kit. Here on GitHub, the goal was to have alternative to the official starter kits with only Blade option without any Vue.js. I will link the repository and the video about it in the description below if you want to try it out. But basically the code is this. Routes web, task controller, which returns blade, so no inertia here. And then in the blade, if you want something dynamic, then you have something like this. You have Vue.js component, like for example, toggle description, and you define the parameters if you want. And that toggle description looks like this. So separate Vue.js component. So here you have description, here you have logic, when to show or hide the text. So is collapsed, max length and you can define your logic however you want inside of that Vue.js component, which is reusable, so toggle description is used separately on many tasks. So basically this way is a replacement for jQuery. But over the years, for these cases, another alternative appeared. This is Alpine.js. So here's the homepage of Alpine.js, and the very first example basically explains its popularity and its main use case. You have all the code in one div, and that's all code you need to write, just script source from CDN, define the variables in the div with X data, define the behavior on click or something, and then define X show with open true or false, and then it will show or hide. So compare this amount of code to the Vue.js component that I have just shown you a minute ago. And here's the code for that index blade, same blade with for each with input checkbox. And this is the same logic of that Vue.js component just in line instead of a separate view file or it would be JavaScript file. You define the variables in the X data, you define some in it if you want to initialize something, and then you have X text with dynamic behavior and at click is collapsed is inversed and then if is collapsed then show less or show more and then x show is also a condition so it's very easy to use and to adopt so over the years i've seen in laravel community such small cases of vue.js or kind of jquery replacements was handled by alpine.js instead if you want to learn more about Alpine.js, I have one hour course. It's from 2022, but it's still relevant. Nothing has changed since then. And also relatively recently on YouTube, I released a video how Spati use Alpine.js for one of their open source projects. So I will link that in the description below as well. And finally, when I talked with the community just a few weeks ago, here's my tweet. Am I understanding this correctly that almost built and real stacks are everywhere and I will link that in the description below. So you may read the replies and the comments and also a few months before in March, this is the result of my poll also on Twitter. So 42% use it with inertia, but 29% are still in the JS front plus Laravel API. So as I said, it's not dead, it's not going anywhere, it's just less popular, but still strong. And even that some JS, Alpine JS or jQuery replacement, as I call it, still has its power with 22% at least in that poll of my audience. And another final, final link I want to mention here, I totally forgot recently, we published on Laravel Daily this, Vue.js in Laravel, main things you need to know for premium members, kind of for beginners of what Vue.js component is, is the topic. So kind of from scratch. And here I identified three options of 
using Vue in Laravel. So I will link that full article in the description below as well. Now, what do you think in general? Do you see the same trend that Vue is mostly with inertia in Laravel community? Or do you still create projects with Vue separate and API separate in Laravel? And in that case, what is the reason of that decision? And have you encountered any issues with one or another way and then switched maybe? Let's discuss it all in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.